Tonight at 6 p.m. Eastern over on Jaguar Gator 8, a new college football video drops. Also at 9 p.m. Eastern, join me live on Twitch where we'll talk about anything and everything in our weekly Q&A stream. Link to join below. And now, on with our feature presentation. No matter the year and no matter the team, it's important going into every NFL draft to have a clear-cut plan of attack. Yes, there are going to be things that happen during the draft that you don't necessarily expect, like a player sliding or a player getting taken way higher than you thought, and that can definitely mess up your plans and make you want to reevaluate things. But the most important thing you can do is keep a clear, calm, and level head. When something goes wrong, you approach the problem with logic and reason, and you don't stray away from your core plan and your core idea. For just about every pick made at the NFL Draft, it's made as a collective unit after deliberation, and it's made with clear reasoning. And then, there's the San Francisco 49ers in 1989, who chose a player entirely off of panic. Now, to be fair to the Niners, they were dealt a somewhat shocking blow literally the day of the draft that forced them to practically adjust their plans on the fly. But in 1989, the Niners made a pick that threw their entire draft board and draft strategy out the window, and wound up backfiring on them pretty badly. One hour before the NFL draft, the 49ers had no need to take a tight end. All of a sudden, when they were on the clock, they had a burning need to do so. And it resulted in a horrible pick made entirely out of panic. This is the story behind the most panic pick in not just the history of the San Francisco 49ers, but maybe the history of the NFL draft as well. Before I talk about the pick in question and how it panned out, we need some context to understand why the 49ers had this need at tight end in the first place. In 1984, the 49ers spent a second round pick on Ohio State tight end John Frank. They saw that their starting tight end, Russ Francis, was on the wrong side of 30, and probably didn't have a lot left in the tank so they decided to be proactive and draft his replacement, with the team being more than willing to let him ride the bench for a bit. And sure enough, after not playing a whole lot in his first three seasons with the team, Frank's role increased once Francis was now a member of the New England Patriots. Was Frank a great player? Not by any means. However, he was a really solid option that fit the offense perfectly. He was big and powerful. He had reliable hands, rarely dropping any passes thrown his way. And he never shied away from contact always willing to bowl people over for extra yardage. Head coach Bill Walsh said that someday, Frank will be one of the best tight ends in the league. And the legendary John Madden echoed that statement, saying on Frank entering that 1988 season, John Frank is a tight end with a linebacker's mentality. He loves the collision. Anytime you're getting praise from John Madden for the way you play the game, you know you're doing something right. And during that 1988 season, even though he missed some time due to a fractured hand in the middle of the season, he was an instrumental part in the success of the team. There's a reason that the Niners were saving one of their activation spots to wait until Frank came back, because they needed him. In games that Frank played, including the playoffs, the 49ers were 9-1. In games that he didn't play, the Niners were just 4-5. That is not a coincidence. And he came up clutch in the playoffs. He had a critical touchdown in the third quarter against the Chicago Bears in the NFC Championship that put the game out of reach, as his score made it 21-3 and the 49ers won it 28-3, because in a normal world, 28-3 is a perfectly safe lead. And in the Super Bowl, he had a 7-yard catch on the second play of the drive, picking up the first of the first down conversions on what would become the greatest drive in the history of the Super Bowl, and maybe the greatest drive in NFL history. Because of his efforts, the 49ers won Super Bowl 23, winning their third title this decade and their third title in franchise history. Naturally, Everyone thought that Frank would be back for an encore in 1989. He was the team's starting tight end, was coming off of the best year of his career from a yards-per-catch standpoint, a yards-per-game standpoint, a receptions-per-game standpoint, and a touchdown standpoint. In just about every statistical average, 1988 was the best year of his career, and he was only going to be 27 years old in 1989, so he was in the prime of his career. The 49ers team set at tight end going forward, they had the incredibly tough, strong, and resilient John Frank starting, and Brent Jones, their young tight end who they liked a lot, as the backup. It was time for the San Francisco 49ers to run it back. However, while everyone else liked the idea, it seemed like there was one person that wasn't too crazy about it, and that was none other than John Frank, because he was thinking about calling it quits and ending it all with a Super Bowl win. Frank was an incredibly smart person who had incredibly lofty aspirations upon completion of his NFL career. Because once Frank was done playing football, he was going to become a doctor, 
and was going to go into otorhinolaryngology, which is a fancy way of saying the surgical and medical management of the head and the neck. During his time in the previous off-seasons, he was trying to finish his medical studies, and finished one year of coursework in four off-seasons. The process was going by way too slowly for him, and the only way to speed it up was if he quit football to focus on this work full-time. And Frank was hinting at retirement after the Super Bowl. He was with head coach Bill Walsh at a banquet in Columbus, although by this point, Walsh moved into the front office to serve as the team's vice president, with George Seifert getting promoted to the head coaching position. If you want to learn more about how that transition happened, click the card in the upper right corner. Walsh asked Frank what the plans were to repeat as champions, and become the first team since the 1979 Pittsburgh Steelers to repeat, when they won Super Bowl XIV, one year after winning Super Bowl XIII. After Frank said it was going to be difficult, Walsh said, we're going to need 16 games out of you at tight end. Later during the banquet, Frank asked Walsh what the team's plans were in the NFL draft in two months. When Walsh said that the guys in the front office were looking at linebackers, Frank said, maybe you should draft a tight end. Walsh cracked up at this comment, laughing hysterically. However, Frank wasn't laughing. He wasn't trying to be funny. He said, no, I'm serious. Somehow, Walsh didn't get the hint at that point and let the comment slide. Two weeks later, however, that comment must have resurfaced in his mind because he frantically called up Frank, realized based off of his comments at the banquet that he wasn't kidding, and said, what do you mean we should draft a tight end? Now by this point, Frank was undecided. He was on the fence, and he would say that this was more like a 51-49 decision instead of a 90-10 decision in terms of his confidence level. Frank even said that he's definitely going to have second thoughts when the season starts and his football hormones kick in. That football is something that he loves and hates to give up, and that it's going to be tough to give up all that money to come back, as he made $325,000 with the 49ers in 1988, and would definitely not be making that in medical school while he was a student. But retirement was definitely on his mind. However, nothing was official. As of February 1989, he was still on the active roster. As of March 1989, he was still on the active roster. As of April 22nd, 1989, he was still on the active roster. But on April 23rd, he made his announcement official. After much deliberation, he officially announced his retirement from pro football. Frank said on his ultimate decision, I'm definitely quitting football. When I first came into the league in 1984, I only wanted to play a few years. My limit was if it ever affected medical school, I give it up. That was my priority. He then added, as far as I'm concerned, I'm in my second year of medical school and won't be playing for the 49ers although I will be with them in spirit. I feel there are bigger and better things to accomplish. After winning the Super Bowl, he was content going out on top, especially after he missed time in the middle of the season with that fractured hand, and realized how much he was sacrificing, as well as how much he was potentially jeopardizing his chances at becoming a surgeon. So what's the significance of this retirement announcement? It literally came right at the start of the NFL draft, the same day. And with that, the Niners completely panicked. One other note on the 49ers. Today it will be official. John Frank, their starting tight end, is indeed retiring to go to med school. It took him four years to finish one year at med school at Ohio State and trying to play at the same time. And what scared uh, John last year, who, by the way, the Niners won almost every time he was in the lineup. This is a big loss for him. He wants to be a, a surgeon, and he injured his hand last year. And when if you're a surgeon, I think you need a pair of hands, good pair of hands. So John Frank will be announcing his retirement here today. Now you might be asking yourself a very valid question. How did the Niners panic? Couldn't they see that the writing was on the wall? To the average fan, maybe this came out of nowhere. But to people in the loop into the front office, it's not like Frank just called up the front office one day and said, Hey guys, I'm retiring, so see ya. Well, Bill Walsh was holding out hope that Frank was coming back, and that this retirement wasn't real. As he said two days before Frank officially announced his retirement, I'm not sure John's completely made up his mind. It could be he evaluates things a little differently and chooses to play as we get nearer to the season. And Walsh was so confident in Frank and so confident in the tight end room, perhaps out of stubbornness, that he flat out said that even if Frank did retire, they were not going to take a tight end early. Walsh said, I'm not sure the draft will make any difference at tight end. It's not likely we'll pick a tight end early with the players available. We see stronger players available at other positions. Translation, the Niners are totally fine with their tight end room right now, even if Frank retired, and the tight ends in this class stink. But somehow, 
after the entire evaluation process, when Frank made his retirement official literally the day of the NFL draft, everything changed. Because Bill Walsh and company completely panicked, and decided that they now needed a tight end. And in the second round, with pick number 56, which was the last pick of the round, they chose this guy right here, snagging Ole Miss tight end Wesley Walls. Don't get me wrong, Walls was an exciting prospect. Much like Frank, Walls was a bulldozer who had that linebacker mentality, which makes sense, seeing as he played linebacker in college. He only transitioned to offense in his senior season, and at one point, was even playing both ways, as he was a true Ironman. And Walls was very good in his first and only season playing tight end, recording 36 receptions for 426 yards and three touchdowns for the Rebels. Walls finished second on the team in receptions and second in receiving yards, only behind Willie Green, who would also eventually get drafted into the NFL. And he finished eighth in the SEC in receptions and 10th in the SEC in receiving touchdowns. He actually led every tight end of the conference in receptions. Considering how great the SEC was, as the SEC had the highest representation during the 1988 Bulls season of any conference, for Walls to lead the conference in that category at his position, especially since this was his first year, was incredible. Yes, there was an extremely low floor, seeing as he was really just learning how to play the position, but the ceiling was through the roof. Walls was a player oozing with potential, as he was extremely raw, but extremely talented. However, when asked about why the 49ers drafted him, Walsh said that the main influence behind the decision was the retirement of John Frank. Now hold on just a minute. You literally said 48 hours beforehand that even if John Frank retires, you're not going to take a tight end early. And now that Frank's retirement becomes official, even though it should not have been a shock to anyone with the brain, you hit the panic button and take a tight end, completely adjusting your draft board. How does that make any sense? This isn't a smokescreen either. I can sniff out a smokescreen from a mile away. This was genuine panic. Frank announced his retirement the day of the draft, and Walsh decided that it was time for the team to take a tight end, even though that was not in his plans whatsoever. It was extremely rare for an organization like the Niners, especially back in the 80s when they were the greatest team in football, to make a decision this hastily, especially one with this high draft capital involved. But that's exactly what they did here by completely panicking, misevaluating their tight end room, and misevaluating the entire John Frank situation. So how did this pick turn out? To the shock of absolutely no one, when you make a decision like this off a of panic, it's usually going to backfire. And it backfired in pretty spectacular fashion here. But the story might not have the ending that you expect. Wesley Walls, to put it bluntly, was awful in San Francisco. He did next to nothing. He was a complete bust and was a complete waste of a pick. What you're watching is literally, I kid you not, the only touchdown that Walls scored with the 49ers. In his first five seasons with the team, Walls had 11 receptions for 67 yards. That was it. He had a grand total of zero games with multiple receptions. He missed all of 1992 with a shoulder injury, and then missed the second half of the 1993 season by being placed on injured reserve with another shoulder injury. He did not record a single reception during 1992 or 1993. To put into perspective just how bad this pick was for the Niners, Pro Football Reference is a calculation called Approximate Value, where they try and assign a number to each player in terms of how good they are. Obviously, the higher the number, the better. It is not hard to get a number. As an example, guard Dean Calgary played 9 games in 1991, started none of them, barely saw the field except in spot duty, and never played again after the 1991 season. His AV was 1. He did nothing. Want to know what Wesley Wall's approximate value was for his five years in San Francisco? Zero. That's right, zero. If you're watching this video, then congratulations. It doesn't matter if you weren't even born yet or not. You had as much value to the 49ers from 1989 to 93 as Wesley Walls did. Walls was a complete bust and was off the team in 1994, showing that this panic pick was a complete waste. So you would think that's where the story ends, right? Well, not quite. Because somehow, after Walls left San Francisco, he became one of the best tight ends of the 1990s. He might have been the best tight end in the NFC during the 1990s as well. It's either him or Brent Jones in the eyes of most people. Turns out, after a horrible first act, Walls went on to have a fantastic NFL career that is still remembered fondly today. He scored eight touchdowns in two seasons with the New Orleans Saints 
and picked up 95 receptions for 1,100 yards in those two years as well. Pretty good numbers for a tight end. But it was with the Carolina Panthers where he truly made his mark. Because after joining the team in 1996, he spent seven seasons in Charlotte and became one of the greatest offensive players in the history of that franchise. He made five Pro Bowls in Carolina, scored 44 touchdowns, had just over 3,900 yards, was named the second-team All-Pro three times, finished fifth in the NFL in receiving touchdowns in 1996 with 10, as he helped guide the Panthers to an NFC West title, a first-round bye, and the NFC Championship in just their second season, and finished second in the NFL in receiving touchdowns in 1999 with 12, only one behind Chris Carter of the Minnesota Vikings, who had 13. Walls played in the NFL all the way until 2003, having the fifth longest career of any player drafted in 1989, and on October 6, 2019, was rightfully inducted into the Carolina Panthers Hall of Honor, joining Steve Smith, Jake DeLome, and Jordan Gross as the first offensive players to ever go in. They were all inducted on the same day. Somehow, Walls became an insanely good player after he left San Francisco, showing that one man's trash truly is another man's treasure. But it's crazy how the 49ers made this pick completely out of panic. Bill Walsh said that the team didn't need a tight end, and that the team didn't like any of the tight ends available early on. He knew what was coming with John Frank in his retirement, and knew that it was going to impact the tight end room in some capacity. Yet once the news became finalized, he panicked and changed his plans, even though in reality, nothing about the situation changed. What Walsh was thinking during this entire process, I'm not sure. But when it came to drafting Wesley Walls, Based off of everything leading up to the decision that came out of nowhere, it seemed as though Walsh's train of thought hit a wall. Get your official Jaguar Gator 9 merchandise by going to jg9shop.com, and be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot, and be sure to check out Twitch every Wednesday night at 9pm Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Gator 9 to see college football videos, subscribe to Jaguar Gator 8. To see highlight videos of players throughout the history of the NFL, subscribe to JG9 Highlights. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping out the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.